Uh, we need to find out more about how you got here, George. You, you've got a decidedly Bakersfield in California country sound on this album. Certainly, I, I guess Pete has something to do with that. But you have a unique background of influences with both California and Texas. Tell us about growing up and where you first heard and learned music. Yeah, uh, I got my first guitar out in California. My my mom had divorced my dad. I was living in Southern California. She got me a a, a red electric guitar. Her friend who played guitar and taught guitar said, well, it's easier for kids to learn on an electric guitar than it is to learn on an acoustic guitar, which is true. And um, I didn't keep it long. It wasn't a great guitar, but it was a hundred bucks or 75 bucks and got me going. Um, from there, I, I soon after that, I was like 10. I moved back to Texas where I'm, where I'm from, where I was born um, and uh, lived to live with my dad and proceeded to get an acoustic guitar one year for Christmas uh, soon after. And growing up with dad and my stepmom, who's a native Houstonian, I, uh, I, I heard a lot of Willie Nelson around the house. Um, also heard a lot of some of the Houston scenes, Shake Russell, Dana Cooper, a local, um, local duet that, that was, you know, they were out at least where I was in, in Houston, Texas. They were, I could hear them all the time around the house or even at, at friends, houses um pretty popular uh on the local scene at, at the very least and maybe they were even much bigger than that i just don't really know because i couldn't even go to bars at the time um but also there was like there was the texas scene like guy clark jerry jeff walker uh became a huge fan of the jerry jeff records um and always held guy clark in really high esteem obviously as a songwriter um so that kind of you know, I cut my teeth on a lot of that stuff. And, um, and then it's just sort of, you know, branched out from there really quickly, of course, because you're going to high school and you're hearing rock and roll and, you know, you get into, it's everything. It's just everything, you know, I loved it all. Like, I was just like, Oh, check out if you're the Prince record, you know, it's just <laughs> everything from that to like Brian Adams or again, the John Lee Hooker stuff or Lightning Hopkins or, you know, whatever your p parents had with their, their vinyl collection. It just was literally everything. And it just kind of s enveloped me, you know, at the time, this is by, by this time I was maybe 13, 14, 15 and, um, just really loved it. And it was all guitar driven stuff, certainly. Um, and it just never really left me. I mean, even going off to going off to school, going off to college or whatever, it's like became, you know, became about the Stones, who also were all they wanted to be was a blues band. You know, <laughs> if you listen to the early Stones stuff, like they were playing Little Red Rooster, you know, I mean, that they I mean, I remember covering that song. I mean, and, uh, I, you know, all they wanted to be was a, the best American blues band in, in England. I think they, were, <laughs> they quoted something like that at the time. So, so, you know, it was always country it was always blues and, and, and then certainly a fair share of rock and roll too, for me. Um, can't even remember the original question right now, but that kind of, <laughs> that's uh, you nailed it. You, yeah. and, and then, you know, living out in, in California too, I, I think I know Tom Petty's from Florida, but he always has a very, very California vibe. Um, and that was a, that was a huge influence. Those records were huge going up for me too. Um, really gravitated towards that and still do. Um, and it wasn't until I moved to Nashville to really, really get serious about songwriting that I kind of got, I kind of delved deep into the catalog, like of, of early country music. And I, I wanted to find out like, well, I like Merle Haggard, but what else is going, what's going on out there? Like, at the time and it became you know that's how i would discover like win stewart and because i didn't grow up with any of that stuff uh but you know it would kind of like i would delve into those box sets lefty frizzell um stuff that was even earlier than merle but you could tell had influenced merle i mean all you got to do is listen to a few songs of lefty or or win stewart and you know where you know where merle was getting some of that some of that melodic sensibility. Um, and then you could listen to other stuff Merle was doing. You could tell how 
how he was also influenced by Buck, and uh, and 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 Buck Owens became a became a a massive influence because I went and you know I I looked at guys like Dwight Yoakam and was like, well, he's touting Buck as an influence, and I want to go check that out, you know. And so that all happened when I was like twenty years old, you know. And then I got to meet Buck on the on a radio tour, and you know, actually sort of really connected with him more so than I. I didn't even know I'd get the opportunity. We were just on a radio tour, but he happened to be there in in the station out in Bakersfield. So we uh, kept in contact, and um, that was kind of before his health, just just before his health really started getting bad. But but yeah, it's an ongoing. It's an ongoing saga, like where you get your influences from and where yeah. it all where it all starts, you know. But I am a, definitely a blend of Texas dance hall and 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 you know that that Southern California or Bakersfield honky tonk and a little bit of the rock vibe out there. 